Randall? Yes. I mean, President. Dep Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Absent. Mayor Moore? Here. We are on to items for review. The city manager's report on issues raised at prior council meetings. None at this time. We are on to item B, special events applications. First application before you this evening is the Twilight March, which would be held on October 8th between the hours of 6 and 8. Next is the SPB scavenger hunt on November 11th. At this point, I'm just asking that the date be approved for that as some logistics still need to be worked out. Asbury Park polar bear races would be held on uh, December 30th. Young Survival Coalition is seeking to do a charity bike ride on October 8th. Columbus Day reenactment on October 8th. House in the Park Colt Drive would be held in Springwood Park on September 30th. Women and Guns Forum, they're seeking to use the uh, Senior Center to hold their forum on October 11th. Sons of Island Polar Bear Plunge would take place on New Year's Day, January 1st. AYF football would like to use Springwood Park on Friday, September 29th for a pep rally. Trunk or Treat would be held in the parking lot here at City Hall on Halloween between the hours of 4.30 and 6 p.m. with the council chambers being used as a rain location. And lastly, we have the Better Block event uh, which would be held in Springwood Park and on Springwood Avenue on October 14th. Are there any questions? Yes, um, AYF Pep Rally. I'm not really for that because um, the condition, under the conditions that these people don't really take care of these kids. And I had to, uh, it got me so upset Sunday that I came over and talked to the mayor about it. Was it Sunday or Saturday? Sorry, sorry. They're still bucketing without permissioning. Have kids out there with no supervision. You know, just sharing this with uh, the council. It's something that we should consider because we don't want none of the kids to get hurt. And they're suing us. They're suing us because we gave them permission to use this. <clears throat> Well, what I can do is meet with those individuals who um, operate Pop Warner and AYF and go over the regulations for tagging with them once again. You can meet with them, but we have met with them on numerous occasions. Thank you. Alicia, did you say Harvest Fest? Is that still? Oh, I'm sorry, I may have skipped over that one. But yes, Harvest Fest um, would be in Kennedy Park, I believe. Yes, on October 14th. It's the same weekend as the um, Asbury Underground. Any other questions? When it comes to a vote, if you want that separated from the package, just that melody though. I think they need to be separated. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with the stadium that they play in? That's what I don't understand. Why do they use the park? Did they say anything about that? I don't know. They used it last year and they were just requesting to use it again this year. Did you call me when you had that meeting? You wouldn't mind. I've been, I've been there. I'd like to be there at that meeting. Okay. All right, thank you. We are on to the review of agenda items for the September 27, 2017 regular meeting. Resolution 2017-289 is a special event application. Uh, resolution 2017-290 is the contribution from the subsequent developer, Madison Marquette, as per the SDA agreement for um, police patrolling along the boardwalk. 
resolution 291 is the um, drunk driving enforcement fund grants funds that we regularly receive the JAG grant which we talked about at the last meeting is resolution 292 um, resolution 293 is the cancellation of interest and penalties with respect to to block 3205 lot 16 commonly known as 601 Heck Street this is the Monroe um, as we were doing the calculations um, there were some discrepancies and many of the people had closed during a couple days before or after the quarter so um, I star had paid everything we didn't want to punish the homeowners for late interest as the closing documents were being filed and completed um, so everyone is caught up to date but we we're asking that, that the interest and penalties be waived because it was just the timing of it um, the resolution 295 is the payment of from Lawrence Tilton uh, from separation of employment he's a police officer and then resolution 296 is the Rotary Club is donating to um, defibrillators to the fire department resolution 284 is a submittal of a grant application for it's not Memorial Drive it is Deal Lake Drive uh, the resolution is incorrect uh, the, the agenda is incorrect the resolution has um, the one in our in our computer software has has um, Deal Lake Drive uh, 297 is payment of bills 298 is authorizing TNM to provide services for the rehabilitation of the vehicle bay door lintel door vehicle bay door lintels at the um, fire firehouse this is a structural integrity issue that has to be replaced um, resolution 299 is the continuation of the contract for the SPCA for animal control when we received solicitations for this last year we had one year contract with one year um, extension staff is recommending um, the one-year extension resolution 217 300 is a grant application and executing a, an award for a transit village wayfinding and gateway signage project um, with the New, Jer New Jersey Department of Transportation we don't have the final plans at this point in time but the application has to be submitted by next Friday so we have to have the grant ready there is no local match for this um, we're looking at some wayfinding signs and um, a welcome to Asbury Park entrance along Memorial Drive um, but we don't have anything yet but this will allow us to apply resolution 217 301 is expressing opposition to the legislative proposals regarding OPMA and, OPMA and OPRA commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act and o Open Public Records Act league staff was actually here today we had lunch um, I told them that we were recommending this um, under the proposed legislation there's two major issues that I have is that any subcommittee um, is then subject to the open public meetings and records open public records act so if two of you were meeting as for the short-term rental ordinance that then becomes a public meeting um, with that my biggest issue is that this exempts the state assembly and senate from doing the same thing they're allowed to actually have little meetings um, whenever they want if the state's going to impose something on municipalities they should be subject to it also um, this comes up every now and then this is this year's opportunity for it resolution 302 is supporting the mid-atlantic regional ocean action plan the littoral society met with myself a couple weeks ago um, they're going around to ocean towns ocean municipalities for support of the, the plan um, that should say plan not plant um, the plan is the confluence of seven federal agencies and departments working through local um, jurisdictions also it governs items such as if you saw in the news last week um, Microsoft and Facebook had done a transatlantic data data cable um, this will actually map where it goes um, as part of the plan so that there isn't another cable on top of things there is another cable top on top of fertile fishing grounds it is governs um, what happens with if there's offshore windmills um, it's a plan but it is something that won't help Asbury directly but it's something that governs barges um, for garbage that can wind up on our beaches so we're recommending that we support the plan um, in its entirety and resolution 303 which is the appointment of the zoning board members um, from my understanding you will be tabling this tonight uh, so you can continue furthering 
a uh, review of applications that have come in. That's the agenda. Hey, Michael, you skipped um, 294, resolution to cancel taxes on city-owned properties. Oh, yeah. What was that? What is that? Sorry about that. Um, auditing our records, we have found that the city charged itself taxes, but we didn't pay ourselves taxes, obviously. Um, there's some going back to as far as 2009 that are in admins in our financial software that have tax rates to them instead of being listed as exempt. The only way that um, interest or taxation can be waived in this situation is by resolution. So we're bringing this to you so we can continue to clean up some of the messes so that we've been found in. Yeah. Gotcha. 300, the wayfaring signs? Yes. Okay, so we're, we're just applying for the grant, but we haven't designed any signs yet? No. So before they're designed, we'll see them? Yes. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. Okay. We are on to matters from the City Council. Um, I have nothing at this time. I just want to make an announcement that the Monmouth County Workforce is having a job fair this Friday, and it's from, oh God, I'm not sure, but it's an all day, <laughs> It's an all-day job fair, and it's really important because there will be over 140 employers there, and it's all levels of jobs from unskilled to graduate level. So it's an opportunity for anyone who's looking for a job to find one. It's going to be held at Brookdale Community College, the Collins Arena on Newman Springs Road in Lincroft. And if anyone needs any information, they can contact the Monmouth County Workforce Board. Is it? Good. What time is that again? <laughs> Starts at 10. Okay. Excuse me. Recreation Committee have came up with the idea to have a trunk or tree and the city yard on um, Halloween night. What that is is this. Um, we are having about 30 cars parked out front with supervision and we're expecting a big crowd and it's be one of the first that I believe we have in this city. And we're looking for volunteers to either bring your car and sit in the back of your trunk and give out candy or donate candy. And you could talk to Alicia or Alicia, who was the other person may I ask? Esther at Alphabets. And we're looking for support from the city. That's it. Two week road update. The road improvement projects, Sunset Avenue, Sanitary Street laterals are nearly complete. Contractors in the process of completing laterals near Memorial Drive and Bridge Street. All the laterals are anticipated to com be completed uh, sometime next week. The traffic signal at Comstock is fully installed and is waiting power connection, depending on how Chase and Pino's schedule will start. Up. That's anticipated to be two or three weeks out. All curb sidewalk is complete in front of the high school. Contractors continue with curb and sidewalk on the remainder of Sunset Ave, approximately three or four weeks for completion. Um, contractors submitted a request for a time extension and recommend phase paving prior to the winter season and file sur final surface pavement in early spring. We will provide a letter to myself to outline the reasons for the extension request as well as the contractor's construction schedule to substantial completion. Um, we're going to recommend extension because this is where they found the concrete and laterals all over the place. That's on Sunset? Yes. Fourth Avenue sanitary sewer mains are underway as of the week of ending as of this week contractor will complete the mains from Memorial to the Louis which is approximately 75% completion. Um, the contractor has committed to increasing his workforce to complete the project on time on or before November 23rd. The Hex Street improvement, which was the 2017 municipal aid application, the design is progressing with roadway and sanitary design at approximately 50% complete. The project is still anticipated to be ready for bidding in mid-November, uh, which would obviously be a spring construction. Springwood 
Fifth Avenue sanitary sewer replacement pending Department of Transportation approval. And at the last meeting, we requested a waiver of the $25,000 inspection fees, which we have not heard from the commissioner yet. Um, there was comments and requested information from DOT furthered on 926. Um, the final resubmission to DOT will be next week. Um, there's some timing issues because DOT wants this done by January 1st, but is it returning the questions? Um, we're not out to date. We know that's going to be impossible. Um, additionally, you'll notice that I said the word resubmission. What had happened was as we planned it, built it, uh, designed it, DOT asked the water company to come in. The water company came in, and then that actually changed the plans. So TNM had to go back and change some of the plans because of the water lines and where they laid. So that was another delay because of DOT, but they still expect us to have the stuff by January 1st. Um, they've begun the Deal Lake Drive submission, submission for the municipal aid application pending the final approval of the resolution. That has to be submitted by October 6th. Um, and then just as a general note, the DOT reconstruction of Main Street sewer is still being completed and they're approximately at the Lake Drive. Uh, the county paving program is also anticipated for Asbury Avenue to start at the end of October. That's going to be site work and then repaving sometime in November. That's um, Black Rock Construction is doing it. They're the county uh, bidder on it and they've been doing work in the cities. They were our bidder on some Project. So Asbury I'm Avenue should be paved by the end of November. Are they going to put any curves in? No, the project does not curve. include curve line. Uh, the mayor had asked, that was about a year ago, for me to look at curving. Um, it's approximately a mile of linear curving. It's, it's uh, granite curves, so you're looking at probably $65 a linear foot. We're looking at about a $1.2 million cost for, for down and replace. Um, there's no reveal in spots, it's a mess. Um, so it's better as a sidewalk streetscape replacement than trying to fix the curb. The curb there is just, it's shot. It just needs to come out it's in its entirety. So is that the plan? No. no. Uh, we don't have $1.2 million to do the curb alone. No, I mean, is it the plan to take it out, just re repave it, put in concrete curbs, or? It's just stays as is. They just they just pave to what's there, and that's not Asbury. That's the county's policy yeah, for all 54 municipalities. When they pave streets, they do not replace curbs. And we fought with them and argued and asked them, and they said we don't do it for anybody. Um, so Fourth Avenue has not asked for an extension. Not yet. It'll, it'll be coming. No, fourth is fine. Fourth is November twenty third. I kind I, I, I kind of like sunset where they're going to mill and pave and put down a base coat and then come back in the spring and put down the finished coat because that gives that all that time to settle, especially since we replaced the sewer lines. Is Fourth Avenue? Is, are they willing to do that also, or is we that? Can ask them. Right. I mean, if they say they, they don't need it, I mean, it just gives it more time to settle. And especially when you're replacing sewer lines, I mean, you, you, you got a lot of settle in there. Uh, Steiner Place. Any update? Manzella just got back yesterday. He's the one who's doing it, so we don't have to pay him now. Okay. Okay, thank you for that update. That's all good news. Going back to a couple meetings ago, we were talking about uh, DEP and Interfaith on the lots and that they were in negotiations and that they should be done with their site remediation by the end of the fiscal year? That's our site remediation. If you go out there now, that's us. Um, I actually just got an update 25 minutes ago, maybe half hour ago. Um, they found a couple basements that were down there, but they stay. So they're going to be backfilling after the, the soil testing comes back, which should be about a week or two. We're on target. We were supposed to be done by the end of September or early October. Our project of the soil remediation will be done. Um, Interfaith is having issues with their stormwater management requirements. Um, I have not heard from them recently in the last two or three weeks. 
when everything's good and on project with DEP. For our side of, of the work, yes, we are right on schedule. Okay, thank you. Oh, I have uh, one thing to announce. Uh, Sunday, October 1st, uh, American Heart Association is having a heart walk. It starts at 9 a.m. Bradley Park. It goes up and down the boardwalk and then kitty rides and adult games and everything in Bradley Park and prizes and it's uh, for a good organization so if anybody wants to come out and walk for the American Heart Association that's Sunday October 1st thank you okay we're on to item E matters from the city manager a few years ago there was legislation passed that all municipalities must do what's called the best practice checklist my third one since we've been here, the first or second week I started, we had to do this. Um, so this year, just like the previous years, we scored high enough that we don't lose any uh, state aid. The, the law states that depending on how you score, the, um, the municipality may lose up to 3% of the final quarter, quarter payment of municipal state aid. Um, we had three no's, two of them which I consider legitimate, the other one which was the technical that most people have to say no at. Um, so we were, we're going to receive 100% of our state funding. The fiscal monitor reviewed it, agreed with everything. Um, we have to give a presentation on it. Uh, one of the no's was, was there on findings that were repeated? And that was yes, um, which is the community development block grant program. I am happy to report that myself and uh, Cassandra Dickerson have been meeting with the county. Um, at the next meeting, you should have a resolution for the county to take over the CDBG program. Um, which will wipe out all those auto finance. So um, we're just waiting for the final language from the county. We'll be adopting it first. The county will be at the end of the month, but if everything looks good to go, we're going to be able to, to clear some of the, those findings. Are there any questions on the, the checklist itself? You're on to item F, matters from city attorney. And I have nothing at this time. Okay. We will recess until 7 p.m. Okay. Hey, Council member right. Chapman, here. Council, here. Council member Clayton, here. Council member Kendall. Presence. Mayor Moore. I said it here. Please stand for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection. We will now salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 3, 2017, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. Do I have a motion to open the meeting for the public portion? Move it. Second. Please come to the mic, state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes each up. Jim Henry, Sunset Avenue. Uh, at the workshop, uh, you discussed the good possibility of extending the uh, contractor's uh, completion date for the sewer work, uh, actually the road work. And if you do that, I'd like to recommend that as part of the uh, extension agreement that you require the contractor to maintain the base course until uh, the top course goes on. In other words, keep the potholes and stuff out of the uh, roadway. I mean, if you're going through the winter, that's the biggest likelihood uh, that you're going to have problems with during that time period. And so I just recommend that uh, you include in your any agreement that you have to extend the time that the uh, contractor be required to maintain that paving uh, of the base course to uh, keep it you know, reasonably smooth. Well, Thank you. Absolutely spot on. Thank you.
Good evening, Mayor, Council. Pam Lamberton, Sunset Avenue. Um, I have three concerns about items on the agenda tonight. Um, I would be anxious to hear some uh, conversation amongst council members regarding the resolution regarding the Sunshine Law. Just from a, a resident standpoint, I want all the information and transparency that I can get. So I don't th know that passing this this ordinance or resolution against it is such a good idea. Uh, the second has to do with Columbus Day, um, which we have uh, celebra celebrated in this city for years and years, and uh, it is promoted and supported by the city itself, and in today's environment, uh, I think it would be a good idea to cease that celebration. And you can just Google Christopher Columbus and racism and read his diary entry for October 14th. Um, we should not be celebrating him, and to have the city supporting it um, and promoting it, I don't think is a very good idea. I'd like to see that stopped. And the third has to do with the special event permit for the use of the senior center. Um, I forget who that was from, but it, it said that it was a $50 fee to rent the senior center. Can that be right? Because I, my understanding was the f senior center involved, involved staff that you had to pay if you wanted to use the senior center for any kind of event. So three things, Sunshine Law, Columbus Day, Senior Center. Se I'll start off with the Senior Center. Senior Center was a $50 application fee. And then on top of it's a $100 rental fee plus a maintenance man at how many hours of $50 an hour. Okay, thank you. But that was just the application fee. Uh, Columbus Day is on tonight's agenda and you'll see how everybody votes on it. Maybe and you could separate it from the other events. Uh, if a council person wants to recommend that, they can do that. And the third one was the Sunshine, Sunshine. Law. Michael, you want? I, d I did hear Michael's recommendation at the workshop. Well, it's, it's also a little bit more than that. <clears throat> okay. Because if you any if any group or body then does what this um, the ordinance the Senate bill is proposing, the costs are incredibly high, because at that point, if you have, we'll say with Columbus Day, two council members, uh, former committee to study Columbus Day. It's now public. So now you're having advertising costs. You have to have the city clerk there. So now you're paying overtime or comp time for someone to be there. Um, you have official meeting minutes. There's additional costs involved with it. Um, I've worked with the league for the last few years about this. And to me, if you want to do something like this, you should also pass the newspaper law where you can just advertise on your website. Because now, why should we spend $250, $125 to advertise for two council people? They're not a body. It's a, it's a group. Um, and why should the municipalities be required to do this when the state's exempt from it? It goes both ways. So there is a, a great big cost and another burden, another records retention burden um, that's borne by the municipalities under what Senator, <coughs> excuse me, Senator Weinberg keeps proposing versus the state. It, it's it's not a fair example. If the state's supposed to be, you know, our parents in this, they should be doing what you know we should be doing too. The cost, though, is going to be incredible for any time. And we're not just talking about the governing body. If the planning board put together someone, if the housing authority, um, if the zoning board looked at studying anything, any body or commission or committee created by a, a, a local government is now going to be subject to this. It is going to be incredibly, incredibly costly and time consuming. And we'd burn out this, the, any, any municipality would burn out their clerk because the clerk would have to be at the meeting. So it, it's just transparency, yes. The way the bill is written, it doesn't, it doesn't do that. It makes it worse. Any comment from the council? Yes, I'm just curious. I didn't hear exactly what you say, why we shouldn't have this. I misunderstood what you said. Could you say it again, please? About that? Me? Yes. Um, I, just that from a resident standpoint, I want as much transparency as possible. And if there is a meeting going on between two council members and maybe a member of the public regarding Columbus Day, for example, um, if they reach a decision that's going to affect that event, which is my concern, um, I would like to be able to know how they reached that conclusion. 
So I, I'm in favor of the transparency it provides. Isn't it basically just a yearly thing? It's just basically a yearly event, right? But that, no, no. We're just using that as an example. Oh, just, right. an example. Just, just, just an example. Just an example. That's just an example. No, this could be a, a weekly, uh, a daily uh, it could occurrence. Be a recreation committee Sorry, talking it could. about trunk or tree. And then you would have right. to. And then you have to have. That could be overhaul. Okay, I understand. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. Your turn, Rita. <laughs> I missed that whole thing. I didn't come to the work session. Uh, Rita Morano, 8th Avenue. Uh, what does that mean? You can't put in a NOPA request? Is that what that's about? You answer that. No. Talking about the Sunshine Law, right? Do you want to finish all your questions, then we'll ask? Okay. okay. All right, that, that was Pam's uh, thing. <laughs> uh, I'm for Columbus Day. That's history, and we can't change anything. That happened, and I think we should be, uh, I don't think the Knights of Columbus or any of them would be very mad at you if you took away Columbus Day. Uh, I wanted to know, in June, I think it was, the Housing Authority announced they were gonna knock down Boston Way. And it's September, the last week in September. What happened there? And uh, thirdly, I keep hearing about Bradley statue. That's also history. And I wanna see that stay there. That's a beautiful statue, has beautiful pictures on it. And I don't see any reason to go back 200 years and say, oh, well, that's not right. Lots of things weren't right 200 years ago. But this is 2017, and I would want to, I, I really would make a big stink about it if anybody was going to take it down. So that's about it. Okay, so you have one question that needs an answer, or two. Huh? The Housing Authority pulled the demolition permits last week, um, and they're hopeful from what I was told by the construction official that they'll have it down, Boston Way down in two or three weeks. They'll have it down what? In two or three weeks. That's what, the, that's what they told our construction code official. They had to do asbestos removal before they could knock it down. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, and the other question. A anything uh, about the statue? I, I know there's something going on tonight with the Channel 12. But Channel 12? Yeah, I'd like to know how the council feels about that. It's, what, yeah. what was your other question, that either Fred or uh, no. Oprah? It's still final Oprah. You can still file OPA requests. What? The, the Your first question. The legislation that is proposed and that the council has a resolution before them tonight potentially to oppose will not affect your ability to continue to file an OPA request. Mm -hmm. uh, did you, uh, well, also, Channel Talk said you issued a permit for a rally in October. Is that true? For what? For uh, the statue. That's not true. The Bradley statue. That's not true. It's not true? Yep. It, well, it, it came on as a, like, I, I, I see stuff on TV all the time that's not true. It was not true. Tonight, you, special events, you don't see it on the agenda. Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Scranton Longbrand. Okay, in light of what happened with this last heat wave and people dis disrespecting the lifeguard's orders and stuff like that, I think Asbury Park, Long Branch, all the beach towns need to find a way where people listen to the lifeguard or charge for the rescues. Now, I don't know, they use a lot of effort to save people you put people's lives in danger because people can't follow the rules there has to be a pay if you want to do the time you got to pay the fine and you got to figure a way to do it with other towns i don't know whether you're going to bring it up with the legal municipality 
I don't know whether you guys should get the black eye for being the first one to do it, but people shouldn't get away with not listening to the lifeguards. I mean, I feel bad people drown, feel bad people get hurt, but they put other people's lives in danger. So I like you guys to think about that. And then um, the 10 year cycle for the housing boom is coming to an end. And maybe in a year or two, things are gonna slow down. I really like you guys to see if we have performance bonds on the new buildings going up, that they will be completed so we don't get another C14, we don't get another Esperanza. The bubble's gonna pop and other towns are rushing to get things done. You guys need to be thinking ahead of the curve. The other thing is, why are we building more wooden buildings in the downtown area, the new buildings that are going up? When you go to cities, they have steel and concrete. We shouldn't be building wooden buildings, whether they're townhouses or apartment buildings or whatever, they're dangerous. And we should be thinking green buildings for the future and give tax abatement to buildings that are 100% green. The gas company or the power companies all give information on how to build green construction. And you guys may want to take a course in that. Okay, 1000 Grand Avenue, the Century House, rumor had it's going to come down. I don't know how a property that was worth $600,000 a year ago got sold for two seventy-five. I don't know how that happened. But the idea that someone's going to knock a historical house down like that, of that magnitude, I wish there was a way you guys could intervene. And the 10-year plan, when I went to the uh, plan and the housing board, I was shocked the way it was run. I thought you guys were coming up with ideas for land use. I didn't know it was a cry for jobs. Someone should have straightened out that meeting and put it back on the track instead of letting it run off to a dead end. I think my, I like to recommend that Memorial Drive be rezoned and maybe you could give tax abatements for building office buildings along Memorial Drive as a way of bringing new jobs to the city. Because if we could have a transit village, you could have more people working here. I think if we had corporate headquarters along the railroad track, it'd be a great environment when people drive the train by. Thank you very much for listening to me. But um, will you look into some of those things I gave suggestions for, please? And Michael, did you have some comments? No. Okay, the lifeguard thing we'll look into. I forget what else. Uh, well, the lifeguard stuff, I mean, people not following the rules. Right, and then the master plan, I believe you can still make comments. So you, you can go online and make your comments. And so. Well, I don't. I'm just saying, we're friends here. I'm just saying, you guys try really hard and things are good, but, but they got but railroad, want, I mean, it went off the tracks. But, okay, no, I'm talking about, if you want Memorial Drive to be light industry or something like that, make that comment or else it's, okay. it does no good making it here. It's got to go to the master plan review committee, the planning board, and then eventually here. But by the time it gets here, it will be too late. So please go online and make that comment. Hey, thank you, John. I, I appreciate you. And have a good day, guys. Okay, thank you. Motion to close. All in favor? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are on to item F, minutes. We have three sets of minutes. We have the executive session minutes of September 13th. We have the work session minutes of September 13th. We have the regular meeting minutes of September 13th. Do I have a motion to approve? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We are on to item G, consent agenda resolutions. We have 2017-289, a resolution approving the special events application. 2017-290, a resolution of the City of Asbury Park, County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, providing for the insertion of special items of revenue in the 2017 budget of the City of Asbury Park, pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 4-87, Chapter 159, Waterfront Redevelopment Contribution. 2017-291, Resolution of the City of Asbury Park, County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, providing for the insertion of special items of revenue in the 2017 budget, the City of Asbury Park, 
pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 4-87 chapter 159 drunk driving enforcement fund. We are on to 2017-292 resolution of the city of Asbury Park, County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, providing for the insertion of special items of revenue in the 2017 budget of the city of Asbury Park pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 4-87 Chapter 159, JAG Grant. 2017-293, resolution authorizing the cancellation of interest and penalty with respect to Block 3205, Lot 16, 601 Heck Street. 2017-294, resolution to cancel taxes on city-owned properties. 2017-295, resolution of the City of Asbury Park, County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, authorizing compensation payment to Lawrence Tilton upon his separation of employment. 2017-296, resolution accepting a donation from the Rotary Club of Asbury Park for the Asbury Park Fire Department. For the council moves forward to um, move all of those consent agenda items together, I would suggest that we pull out resolution 2017-289, which is approving a special events application because of the discussion that happened during the work session because um, you may want to vote on one or more of those separately. So I would suggest that you just take that one out and vote on all the rest of the consent agenda items together. Then you can revisit 289 when you get to the individual resolutions. That's my suggestion. Mm -hmm. Second. So let me just clarify. The yeah. motion and the second was that to move all of the rest of the consent agenda items agenda items forward without 289 from 90 through 96 inclusive very good okay so it's a motion and a second to move resolutions 2017-290 through 2017-296 not on 2017-289 that one will be uh, considered separately okay the individual okay uh council member chapman yes council member clayton yes Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. One. Yes. Go to it now. Okay. Okay. Now we are on to resolution 2017 289, a resolution approving special events applications. Move it. Second. With no. exception. Okay. So okay. Let's clarify. Yes. We're going to do each of these separately. You want to move it as currently written or you want to move it without um, one or more of the items that are set forth currently in resolution 289 you well, want to take out based on I, I moved it in a second and then I think Jesse's going to Remove. ask for something to be right withdrawn and voted on separately right. and I have no problem with that so the item that you want voted separately is, is number 10 pep rally number 10 yes correct right. are there any other ones of the special event application Correct. Okay. So okay. is there a motion to move forward? Um, resolution 217-289, approving special event applications. Um, all of the ones identified in the resolution except for number 10. Move it. Second. Okay. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Okay, now we will have a separate vote on item number which will now be labeled 2017-289-A. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve? Move it. Second. Okay, Council Member Ka Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Council Member Kendall? No. Mayor Moore? Yes. Okay. So 10 is half way that's right. Okay, we are on to item H, individual resolutions. The first resolution, there is a typo in the agenda. It states Memorial Drive Improvement Project. It should be Deal Lake Drive. 
So it's going to be 2017-284, a resolution authorizing an approval to submit a grant application and execute a grant contract with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the year 2018 for the Deal Lake Drive Improvement Project. Do I have a motion? Yes. Second. Move it. Okay. Move it. Any questions or comments? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We are on to 2017-297, a resolution authorizing the payment of bills. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Chapman is abstaining from 17-02489, 17-01527, 17-00997. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. On to 2017-298, uh, uh, authorizing a professional service contract, authorizing TM to provide services for the rehabilitation of vehicle bay door lentils. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to resolution 2017-299. A resolution authorizing the continuation of a contract to the SPCA for animal control. Do I have a motion? Move, Move it. it. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to resolution 2017 300. An approval to submit a grant application and execute a grant contract with the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the Transportation Village Way funding finding and gateway signage project. Do I? Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We have a resolution 2017 301, a resolution expressing opposition to the legislative proposals regarding the Open Public Meetings Act and the Open Public Records Act. Do I have a motion? Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We are on to resolution 2017 302, a resolution supporting the Mid Atlantic Regional Ocean Action Plan. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to, um, do I have a motion to table? Uh, resolution 2017-303 to give the council more time to review applications. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Happy birthday, Jensen. <laughs> yeah.